Regina Bell. God is good. 27 minutes after the hour of 9 o'clock as we prepare for the radio ministry of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, the voice of Liberty, where the Reverend Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. God is good. God is good. I want to remind you, beginning on Monday night, the Mobile Baptist Mobile Baptist Sunlight District Association annual session will begin on Monday morning, Monday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. That's June the 3rd, and we'll go all the way through June the 6th there at the Sunlight District Auditorium. On Thursday night will be the moderator's annual address will be held Thursday night. That's at 8 o'clock p.m. at the Sunlight District Auditorium. So the session will begin on Monday morning there at the Sunlight District Auditorium and we'll go all the way through the 6th. The moderator's message will be held on Thursday night, 8 o'clock p.m. That's the Reverend David L. Frazier Sr. is the moderator. So you are invited to come out. All the churches of the Mobile Sunlight District are asked to be in attendance. As we continue with Saturday morning inspiration, it's now time for the Voice of Liberty. It's now time for the radio ministry of the Voice of Liberty with Dr. Clyde May Jr., pastor of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. We greet you this morning, the wonderful and saving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and we're ordained to be allowed to come into your home, your job, your place of business. I am the Reverend Johnny Robinson, our reach minister, Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where I'm own Dr. Clyde May Jr., giving us such an opportunity to share the word live with you every Saturday morning. Count it one of God's rich blessings to be on top of the dirt. Dirt ain't on top of me. I got a chance this morning to get it right. On this side of the grave, truly we are located at 1759 MLK Avenue. We have a morning service game with our Sunday school at the 9 a.m. hour. Morning which we've had the 10.30 hour. Don't stop that. We'll be back again at 5 p.m. on the radio for the hour of power. Even uh, you'll be blessed of God if you can come by or tune in. Truly don't forget to patronize our partners in the ministry, the J. Rogers Barbecue and Soul Food Restaurant, where they're located at 1444 Industrial Park on the right-hand side. You're going into Mobile College. Call them at 675-3282. And also, that's their fax number. That's right. They have a buffet. That's right. Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Home cooked meal. Pump your pots up in. Go up to the J. Rogers and dine in. If you don't want to dine in, you can call them and get your whole slab of ribs to come with bread. Get your half a slab to come with bread. Get about three or four of them old smoked chicken. You can get your whole and get your half of them. Keep right on out there. Get some good old Joe Bean coleslaw potato salad. French fries of the chain. Fresh vegetables every day. Cake, banana pudding, and peach cobbler. We have a few announcements on tomorrow. Every road lead back to the Liberty Mission Every Church where our youth will in, have a nail fellowship day on tomorrow. Beginning our Sunday school and our morning worship service. And I tell you, you don't want to miss this. They got a plan. They got a program that you don't want to miss. And you'll be glad that you did. And then <clears throat> our auto and media ministers still have a few more uh, uh, sermons from Dr. Clyde May Jr. for a small donation. Hurry, it's about to end now. They have CDs up to 2016 for a dollar up to $3, and 2017, two for $10. And 2018, after that, they are $10. They have cassette play, uh, tape, tapes for 50 cents. And you can call them at the church at 251 479 or you can call 251 421 72 79. Now, in the hand of our trusted partner, let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for allowing us this opportunity to gather together to study your word. 
Thank you, Lord God, for those who are listening right now, wherever they are, whatever they may be. God, whatever they're going through, we pray and ask that you would just touch them and meet them at the point of their need. God, help them to remember that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Because somebody, Lord, is preparing to bury their loved one. Somebody else is preparing for a baby shower. Somebody else is preparing for a wedding. And, and Lord, life seems to go on and on. But, Lord, we, we know that regardless as to what the day holds, that you hold the day. God, we can lean and depend and trust on you to see us through it day in and day out. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity to be able to come to the radio station and share what you've laid on our heart. We ask right now, Father, that you would just bless our ears to hear what you're saying, because, Lord, your word is already blessed. We ask, Father God, you bless the messenger today. God, give me strength to deliver this the way you gave it to me. And, God, that someone may be helped and someone may be encouraged and someone may come to know that you're still working on their behalf. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. And truth be told, we don't thank you enough because, God, day in and day out, you keep our heart beating. You keep our lungs filled with air. You keep us in our right mind. And, God, you give us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And, Lord, we don't even acknowledge you the way we should. And, God, I'm guilty of that. And I ask you to forgive me, Lord, for not, Lord, for not giving you what's rightfully yours, which is the glory do your name. Not just for what you do, but just for who you are. Lord, we pray and ask right now that you will look in on those who are locked behind prison bars, those who are in homes of convalescence, those who may even be in hospitals. Lord, that we pray, Father God, that you would just touch them right where they are. Help them realize they may be locked in, but they're not locked out. Lord, they have an audience with you, and they can, Lord, they can actually be able to come to the throne of grace, boldly come, and Lord, Lord, give their petition, cast their cares upon you, for you care for them. Father, we thank you for reminding us day in and day out of just how much you love us and all that you do for us on our behalf. We appreciate you for it. And we, Lord, we, we just give you glory. Now, Lord, we ask that you will help us to live a life that, God, that's pleasing to you, that, Lord, that brings honor and glory to your name. God, help us to, Father God, touch somebody, Lord, to share a kind word or a listening ear, Lord. God, whatever you blessed us with, help us to be a blessing with it to those who are around us, those to whom we've been called to serve, those to whom we've been sent. God, help us to understand and know that you are still in control. And Lord, Lord, we thank you that, Father God, that you're taking good notes. And God, everything that we do in your name, God, you shall reward. God, help us to be mindful of what we do and how we do it and who we do it to. Lord, that we may be able to stand before you without shame. But, Lord, be able to know that we've lived a life that's pleasing to you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to be here today uh, to share with you what God has laid on our heart. This is Deacon Sacconi, Prince of the Trusted Partners Ministry of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. And we're so grateful to God for this opportunity to share with you the word of God today. We want to thank Pastor May for giving us this, this grand opportunity to be able to come to you via the radio. Thank God for Reverend Robinson and for his constant source of encouragement. Uh, thank God for the man he is, for the minister he is, for the reverend he is. I, I appreciate him for just being consistently faithful in his dedication to God. You never know how need for that is until you get into a place where you want to give up. But then you think about somebody else who's still on the battlefield. And Reverend Robinson reminds me of just how the race isn't given to the strong nor the swift, but to the ones that endure to the end. And to one of God's greatest churches, the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, I counted the privilege and a blessing to call Liberty my church home. I'm so grateful to God for placing me there and for allowing me to raise my family there and to grow there. It has been so, so important to have a body of believers that, that you can lean on and that every now and then they can lean on you because, like the song said, we all need somebody to lean on. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to John chapter 9? I'm going to look at several passages of Scripture, but it's all going to be in the same passage. John chapter 9. Starting with the first verse, for the conservation of time, you're going to read verse 1, 2, and 3, and then we're going to jump down to verse 24 and 25. So John chapter 9. And while you're turning, 
with one hand, why don't you pick up the phone with the other hand and call somebody and tell them to turn on Gospel 900 and 660 AM WGOK. Because I do believe there is a word from the Lord for us today. John chapter 9, verse 1, 2, and 3, verse 24 and 25. And those who are watching via the World Wide Web, if you would just swipe and share, share this out so that God's word may get to God's people. Amen. John chapter 9, verse 1 says, And Jesus passed by. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he might be, that he was born blind? Verse 3 says, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jump down to verse 24. It says, Then again call they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. It's funny what people will say they know. Verse 25 says, And he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, yeah. that whereas I was blind, mm -hmm. now I see. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the subject today, God allowed it. Mm. I'm going to say that again. God allowed it. My Lord. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to truly understand what God is up to. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. There are times when, when I just find myself scratching my head. But you know what I've come to understand is that as a finite being, that means I have limits. That's that right. means my mind has limits. My understanding has limits. Even my thoughts have limits. As a finite being, I can't understand the infinite. I only see a portion of the picture. Not all. God sees the whole thing. Let's see if I can give a comparison. It's, it's almost like trying to put the oceans of the world in a thimble. I mean, you and I both know <laughs> that's not going to work. No, sir. And when we compare our understanding to God's understanding, it's like trying to put the ocean in a thimble. It just won't fit. Well, there are things in our life that God, he didn't cause, but he allowed. God didn't cause them, but he allowed them. As we look at our passage today, we see here how Jesus is in the midst of one of his many miracles. And as he passed by, he saw a man. Mm -hmm. And I found it kind of kind of interesting how he saw somebody that was blind. The Lord allowed me to do a message a couple of years ago talking about where he saw us before we saw him. In this particular passage of Scripture, Jesus saw a man that was blind from his birth. It's not that he started off seeing and went blind or something no. happened or accident or some disease, but he had never seen the light of day. All right. He came into the world in darkness. Mm. That's all he knew. Now, he says he was a man, so he started off as a baby and was a toddler and a child and a young man, and then he became a man, but all his entire life, mm -hmm. he was blind. My man. He heard his parents' voice, but he he never saw their face. He he may have had sisters or brothers, we're not told. He, he may have had a little friend that he tried to play with, but he never saw their face. He could only do so much because of the limitation of his lack of sight. My Lord. But Jesus saw him. Jesus. In his situation, in what he was dealing with, in what he was going through. And not only did Jesus see him. But his disciples, they saw him also because that second verse says, and his disciples asked him saying, Master, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Obviously, they knew yeah. him. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't that somebody just said, oh, look, there's a blind guy. No, they knew him because they knew his story. They knew his backstory. They knew where he had come from, what he had gone through. They, they, they knew him, and they had a belief My Lord. that if... If there was some, any sort of infirmity, any sort of problem, any sort of challenges, that it had to be the direct result mm. of sin. So they ask the question, who did sin? Did this man or his parents yeah. that he was born blind? Now, a lot of us, we would look at that and we would just say that, you know, they were just kind of being nosy, but they were really trying to understand, can somebody sin even in the womb? Because he was, because they said that he was born blind. So they're trying to determine, they're trying to, where, trying to figure out where do we place the fault at? Is it with his parents or is it with his himself that he was born blind? But Jesus answered, he answered and okay. said, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. You and I sometimes find ourselves in a bad situation yes, sir. where it seems like things are just totally unfair. We wonder what has happened, what has caused it, and a lot of us start evaluating and looking at our life to see, is there something that I did to cause this? Mahalo. Am I the reason, are my actions, are my thought process, are the things that I do, are they the cause of me being in this situation? Mm. And not all of them, not all, some of them are, some of them are a direct result of what we do. But there are other parts of our life that God has allowed. Amen. And when we understand that, we'll stop fighting so hard against it. And we'll realize that God had a purpose in it. Yes, sir. You know, it reminds me of how important it is for you and I to get close to God. Mm. So that we can hear and know and we can understand, we can determine, is this something I need to be concerned about? Is this something that I need to be worried about? Is this something that I need to be working on? Or, or, or God, is this something that you are doing? It's something that you're working on. Because see, cause see, cause see, cause see, we have our part to do, but God has his part. And I think our biggest problem is sometimes we get them mixed up. We try to do God's work. All right. And we leave our work undone. And we wonder, wonder why we're so frustrated. Mm. We wonder why we have a hard time getting where we want to be. We wonder why we're lacking peace. Because we're trying to do stuff that God didn't call and give us to do. We need to make sure that we are in tune with God to the point to where when something comes in our life, God says, I got this. My Lord. And we could go on, we could be about something else. We can do something else. Peter said, Peter said, cast your cares on the Lord, for he cared for you. Mm. Now, Peter knew what he was talking about because he was a fisherman. He knew what it meant to actually take a net and throw it and cast it. Because what you didn't want to do, if you got too close to the fish, you would scare them away. So you had to be back far enough so that when you got in the vicinity, they wouldn't leave. You could see them. Under the surface of the water, they wouldn't leave, but you could throw your net. So you slung it as far as you could. So Peter knew what it meant to cast mm. a net. So when he said, cast your cares on God, for he cares for you, that meant for us to throw them as far as we can. That means get as far away from our cares and give them to God. Amen. Because once because once we do that, we're then freed up to do what, call, if do what God has called and given us to do. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so as we look at our life, what is it that God has allowed to happen? Hmm. May have been a loss of a job. May have been a loss of a relationship. May have been strife in family. What, what has God allowed to happen? Sometimes people have disagreements. Sometimes people have arguments. Sometimes people part ways. But sometimes God allows it. In order for people to see just how needful the other person is. They oftentimes say you don't miss your water until your well runs dry. And I know everything in our life is not good, but it works together for our good. God allowed it. Can you honestly say that there are things in your life that you know for a fact that God allowed? 
Now, sometimes, you know, we have to look back on stuff. They say hindsight is twenty twenty, meaning that when you look back on it, you can see clearly what was going on. But while you're in the midst of it, it becomes difficult for you to see just what God is doing. But you know what? I've come to understand that we have to trust God. God will give us peace, that passive understanding. In our text today, Jesus encounters this man who's blind, and he, and he goes about to heal him. But before he even gets to that, he had to help his disciples understand that this was done, that the works of God might be made manifest, that they should be made manifest in him. Some of us, we are so quick to want to get out of a bad situation that we miss the lesson for which God has put in us. And sometimes the lesson it really isn't just for us, it's for those around us, those who see, those who know. Because even in our text today, the disciples had a chance, they got an object lesson looking at this blind man. They realized what Jesus told them, that it was done so that, so that the works of God would be made manifest in him. So when you find yourself in a bad situation, are you so quick and so eager to just run away, to just get away from it? Are you trying to figure out, God, what are you up to? Lord, help me understand. God, God, if I can't understand, at least give me the peace, that passive understanding. When I can't figure it out, when I can't tell or explain it to anybody, but I know for a fact that you allow this, you allow this to happen for a reason. I may not fully understand it. I may not fully be able to grasp it right now, but I just trust you. To, I trust you enough to know that you're not out for my destruction. This is for my development. See, if you ask the plant while it's being pruned, if the, if the husband means loves it, it'll probably say no because he cutting on me. He cutting stuff back. Not only is he taking off the bad stuff, he's cutting back to the good stuff. I can still feel that. But yet, but yet it's done for our development. And if you ask the plant, he would think, look, this guy's trying to kill me. He's trying to cut me down. But if you really understood what the husband was doing, he was prone. He was cutting back, not only cutting off the bad, but cutting back even to some of the good so that it could grow and have more fruit in the end. So what has God allowed? What has God allowed in your life that you know for a fact that it was him? And the only way that you can know that, the only way that you can confidently say that God allowed it, is you have to have a relationship with him. You have to know for a fact that it was him that did it. You know, there are things in life that God didn't cause, but he allowed. He didn't just do it haphazardly, but he did it with a greater purpose in mind. And you know what? We have to be willing to let go of self of the self-made picture in our own head and yield our will to his will. Sometimes we look at our relationships and we wonder, why am I dealing with this? Why am I going through this? There are times when God has to show us ourselves through those relationships. You say, oh, yeah, I'm a calm, I'm a cool person, but then something goes wrong and you fall apart. God allowed it to happen for you to see who you are and where you are. Some of us think, oh, I'll pass that test. I'll make an A on that. Oh, no doubt. If that happened, no, you ain't even got to worry about it. But then God allows it to happen. And you find yourself saying, oh, man, I got a D minus. Oh, man, I got a C. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't believe I missed it. I can't believe I messed up on that. But again, God is developing us, and he's bringing us to a better place. He's bringing us into, into a better situation, and God is using us to be a light unto the world. Jesus told us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and give his Father, our Father, glory in heaven. So are you allowing your light to shine. I think of the burning bush in the Old Testament that Moses saw. He saw the bush. It was on fire, but it didn't burn up. 
That's what got his attention. That's what made him come over there and watch it. You and I both know if anything catches a fire, people are going to come around and watch it burn. But what about your life? Sometimes God allows things to happen in your life that sets you on fire. And, and people wonder, why haven't you lost your mind? Why haven't you gone crazy? Why haven't you just gone postal? But then that's you can tell them because of the God I serve. Because of the God I know, because of the one who came into my life and who saved me, because of the one who made a difference. And you realize this, this wasn't for my destruction, but it was for my development. All right. How do you purify gold and silver? You take it and put it in a furnace yeah. and get all the impurities out of it. They float up to the top and get scraped off. Some of us, we are being purified. We are in the furnace of a bad situation, but God uh, is making us better. Yes, Lord. And God allowed it. You got to accept what God allows. But in order for you to be able to honestly do that, you got to know him for yourself. You got to know him for yourself. You have to develop a relationship with him. You have to spend time with him. You have to get to know him on a yes, personal level. Yes, sir. It's not just about going to a house of worship. It's not just about going to church. It's not just about being in Bible study or teaching me in a Sunday school. Do you know him for yourself? Yes, no. Can you get him on the phone if you need him? Oh, Do you have him in your speed dial? Do you know God's number? Yes, no. Do you know how to say our father who art in heaven? Do you know how to call on him when, when the bottom falls out? All right. When you don't understand and don't see why, but but can you can you trust that you can? I can get in contact. See, sometimes your coworkers won't go to other folks <laughs> asking for prayer because they now now I don't think you can get a prayer through. But then they come to you All right. because they believe that you have a relationship with God to where you can call on Him and He'll answer. Amen. How how do you know Amen. that you have that level of confidence? The only way that can happen is that you spend time getting to know God. So whatever God allows in your life, you can roll with the punches. And you can even throw a few every now and then. Amen. Because you know that God is in control. This man in our text today, he, he winded up saying, look, whether or not Jesus is a sinner, I don't know. But one thing I do know is I was blind and now I see. Amen. The end result is that he got what, what he needed. And I want you to do the same. I want you to get what you need from God. But at times you have to accept what God allows. Amen. God's no now is for something better later. Accept what God allows. God didn't allow you to get that job because he has something better for you. God allowed that relationship to go sour because he has something better for you. God has everything God has is better than what you have right now. Amen. God has your future in his hands. Have you tried him today? Have you given him your, have you come to the foot of the cross and said, Lord, Amen. I yield. All right. I give my life to you. All right. And like this is the prince of the trust upon his ministry of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. And we invite you to come out and share with us for Sunday school and for our Amen. 11 o'clock service. And God will truly bless you. Now we turn it back over the hands of Brother Carter. You've been